Hey, how's it going? This is James from James Films. So excited to be back once again for a weekly recap here. I know this has not been weekly. It's been pretty busy recently with a lot of stuff, but hoping to get back into the series to kind of break down how I put together some of my pieces. Once again, just a reminder, this isn't necessarily like a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I walk through, I guess, my process overall for creating, you know, scenes like the one that you see here. This is a final render um, that I put together really had a fun time kind of breaking this scene down. I, I kind of broke it down into a foreground scene, really spent a lot of time kind of refining all the details for that, and then hid that scene from the viewport so I could focus on the background where you see that castle kind of off in the distance. And so for this one, I've been experimenting a lot recently with working on uh, some AI-generated type things. So I put a couple of my pieces into uh, Mid Journey, uh, with a, a couple of different prompts and kind of worked on generating kind of a, an overall composition that I wanted to create. And so this is uh, one of the things that came up here and, and kind of for me, this has been the use case for AI to be honest with you. I use it as kind of like an extension of my concepts, like kind of have some ideas in mind roughly, but I'll kind of use it to kind of generate, um, you know, another scene beyond what I maybe would have in mind to create something. It kind of gives me a base idea of composition, of some elements, and most importantly, I feel like the color palette, kind of the feel, the mood of the piece. Um, so for this one, I, I have this really kind of interesting bright center piece here, which is this castle perched up on some kind of mountain hill. It's kind of like a little bit weird noise from the AI details here. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what these elements are. It's, is it rocks, is it waterfalls? It's kind of like bizarre. I ended up interpreting it as kind of like a canyon cliff type thing here with you know some trees and stuff perched on it. And then I really like this foreground here where you've got a lot of flowers kind of around this basin uh, with you know water kind of pouring in here and a really nice natural frame of, of trees, kind of dark trees around here. Uh, I wanted to kind of put my characteristic you know, tropical feel to this as well too, so I kind of took this as the jumping off point for my scene composition. So if I go over into Blender now here, so you can see what I like to do pretty early on is set my viewpoint. So I'll, I'll go into my camera and I'll turn on composition guides. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, always, always go over to Viewport Display, Composition Guides, and I turn on Rule of Thirds and Center, just so I know exactly where my center is in my scene. And I start to kind of build up my scene that way. I like to also set kind of the focal length roughly. I, I was going for a pretty wide one here since it's a pretty large scene. And I kind of try to break up my scene into, you know, three different layers here. So we've got the foreground here in this front part, midground, and then the background where the castle is going to be kind of centered up back there. And like I said, this is a pretty large scene with a lot of different details, so I wanted to break this down kind of piecewise, also not to bog down my computer and kind of run out of memory or go crazy with it. So I started with this foreground element here, and the way I created this, what I like to do is uh, just create a plane. So if I go out here, I just made a plane here. Um, so this is kind of how it started off. And then what I like to do is looking through my camera viewpoint here, I will go over into sculpt mode, and my favorite brush recently to be uh, using for sculpting is the clay strips. And I'll kind of just like, you know, paint around here and, and kind of keep an eye on the right here just to kind of see how this is framing out my scene, just to kind of give me a rough idea for framing. I'll eventually fill this in with rocks and vegetation and stuff like that, but this just kind of sets my perspective, sets my composition a bit. And to change the size of the brush, I tap F and then you can pull left or right with your mouse to scale it up and I kind of, you know, we'll just use clay strips to kind of just fill stuff out like this. This is obviously kind of crazy here. But that's kind of my starting point is just going through and, and doing that kind of stuff there to create a rough composition. Uh, I then give this some texture here. So if I go over to render mode, we've got kind of like this ground texture here. So this is just kind of how I've framed up my scene. You see, you've got kind of the nice basin filling up here. There's gonna be some vegetation kind of rimming around here with, you know, a pond or some kind of waterfall feature in the middle there. So that's coming along really well. And I use, for a lot of my add-ons, one of my favorite one recently has been uh, Bee Productions Vegetation Add-on. It's got a ton of different plants if I go through in the menu here. A uh, link for this one is in the description. I found this one to be the best for just kind of all-purpose filling in my vegetation. You've got all kinds of things like lily pads, shrubs, and, and different trees and stuff like that. Um, they, I've added a bunch of new ones as well too. There's like a bunch of bonsai that they've added in, which are pretty fun too. Um, it's got different seasons, so you can like, you know, go for just like autumn or winter or spring type things and the textures kind of adjust accordingly, which is really fun. So I've been kind of experimenting a lot with this and I've found that this has kind of been the best for filling in my vegetation. So uh, I've broken things down into folders. I like to keep very organized here so I can turn things on and off and know exactly what is about to be featured and kind of 
break things up that way. So for this is my vegetation, my veg folder here is from B production. So if I turn this on, it'll take a second to load in here because there's quite a few uh, pieces of vegetation. Um, refresh for a second here. Uh, and what I do is I typically will use actually like the same bush or same tree and then just hit Alt D to make a linked duplicate of it. So you can see this is how I filled in the basin here. This is all from that vegetation asset library. Got a bunch of different plants and trees and stuff. It fills in quite nicely kind of everything here in the foreground. And you can see, uh, you know, this is how it's all broken up. It's pretty simple and I've added in some lighting here. Uh, for the lighting, I just used a sun lamp and I just went with an HDRI for this one. Typically, I'll use physical starlight and atmosphere for these, but I really like this kind of warm HDRI that I have that I use quite a bit to kind of give my renders a certain warm feel to them. So I use that and then used a sun lamp with uh, quite a lot of power to it, it's, uh, strength of 75 and a tint of kind of an orange tint to it to kind of give that warm glow to the plant. So you can see there's like a nice kind of halo around the edges of the vegetation here that you're getting uh, with that, which looks quite nice. I then also use quite a bit another add-on, uh, Botanic, Botan IQ from Polygon IQ. Um, they also have a really cool water aquatic asset library too, where you can add in kind of these fountains and stuff like that. I've kind of experimented a bit with that. I tend to like to use my own ones that I generate, but this is a kind of a fun one for some waterfalls or fountains and stuff like that. Um, and then for Botanic, they've got a bunch of different things as well. Similar to Bee Productions Vegetation Library, they've got a bunch of different plants and things like that too. So for this one, I, I use this to add a couple of trees in as well. So if I turn this on, it'll take a second once again to load up. Um, but I use this for just a, a couple of pieces of trees. And then also there's a lot of flowers and stuff that I really quite enjoy from their library uh, that you'll see here that kind of fills out the scene. So you've got the nice kind of brightness of the flowers and all. And this once again is linked in the description if you want to find this one too. But uh, I just added a bunch of other things in and I placed this all by hand too. I kind of like the uh, manual control of placing these in. You can scatter these. This does have like a built-in scatter function, which I do use uh, quite a bit sometimes. So if I select my ground plane here, you can see you can add in. I've got them turned off for now, but you can like scatter assets on here and they've got a bunch of different kind of presets that you can use here. Um, you know, forest floor, you've got different grass and rocks and stuff like that. Um, that scatters pretty nicely. And then you've got a lot of controls once you do scatter those in to kind of adjust, you know, the number of particles that you're scattering, the scale of them, the randomness. And then you can even uh, use uh, density. You can do weight painting to kind of, you know, choose where these flowers are scattered on your scene. So I use this quite a bit too, which is a lot of fun. Um, but for this one, I wanted the kind of manual control of adding all the different assets in. So that was uh, the approach for that, was adding all those in. I then pulled in some rocks to kind of fill out the basin here. Uh, and again, once again, put these all in manually. Uh, created the kind of base in here. I was going to be painting over this in Photoshop. This was just kind of once again give me a rough idea of where I wanted my kind of waterfall, my pond feature to be. Um, so that was kind of how I filled that out there. And then for a lot of the tropical elements, I used a bunch from the Terrascape add-on uh, collection here to kind of fill these out. And I'll turn this on piece by piece too. So you've got some palm trees kind of filling out nicely here, giving that like nice warm tropical feel to the scene. Uh, another set of them here. Uh, kind of layering these on top of each other. It's just really fun to kind of paint these on and, and kind of create like a mood to everything here. So I've got this really nice natural kind of window frame of the trees uh, where I'm going to be placing that castle in the background here. So this is how I kind of broke up the scene and this was the foreground. So that is all that I had for the foreground. Uh, just kind of putting all that in compositionally uh, was a lot of fun. And then I also added in a little bit of volume here to just kind of soften up a little bit. You're not going to really notice this too much, but you can see there's a little bit of haze that this is added in there. And then I can kind of use this a little bit further in post-processing in Photoshop to kind of enhance that kind of glow uh, from the background elements here. Just kind of add that separation from the foreground and background. So this is the foreground of the scene, and this was a lot of fun to kind of craft and put together, create that uh, composition. Now let's head on over to the background and turn things on piecewise as well. So I first created like a cliff here in the background. So I've, I've kind of stacked a couple of different rocks and stuff here to kind of create like a little mountain range type thing there. I then brought in some vegetation to kind of add on top of this to, you know, kind of blend in with the foreground of kind of having all these bushes and trees and stuff there. So you've got that kind of layered up nicely. And then lastly, I brought in uh, some buildings here from uh, Kitbash. So this was kind of put together and I, I adjusted some textures a little bit, kind of did some control of them and made them blend a little bit more with kind of the concept art that I was going for uh, with that, that really bright castle kind of cathedral in the middle there. So I adjusted some textures here. You'll see this lit up in a second. It's just taking a, a second to process. There are quite a few of these. And then I used uh, some kind of creative lighting. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of point lights here to kind of just enhance that brightness in the middle here of all of the uh, buildings. And 
you'll see that load up in a second. It's just taking a second here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, it's quite a dense scene. So this is once again, you can see, yeah, there you go. The very bright cathedral kind of castle in the middle. And this is why I break things up into collections. So if stuff is starting to run slow in the viewport, I can kind of peel it back, slow it down a bit um, with all the stuff and kind of take things off, mute collections, and then just kind of work on, on certain layers. So for this one, I just muted all the foreground stuff and then worked on just this cathedral element here with all the lighting and stuff. So this is pretty much the final render from Blender. And so then I actually brought this over into Photoshop and you can see there's the, that's the final render there. But let me pull this up here. And so there's a, a lot going on here. So let me just kind of walk through. Uh, it's kind of a mess here. Let me organize things a little bit better and show you kind of how I've broken up the scene. Let me get rid of this one. I don't need this. And let me put these together. So I'm just going to turn all these off. And I'll show you kind of where I started. So this is the rough, or, you know, just the raw render out of Blender here. I added in like a background sky to it and kind of made that adjust in with it, like kind of like a bright blue sky. You can see kind of what it looks like there and kind of just brighten up the clouds a bit so that it's kind of like a little bit washed out. And then if I go in here, I did a little bit of adjusting with the layers, just kind of adding in a pass from Blender. So if I go back over in a Blender in my compositor, I added in a glare node. Um, oops, you can't see this here because I'm in the image editor. Let me go to the compositor. I just added in a glare node here with a fog low selected. And so I blended that layer in here. I've got this kind of like glow layer that you can see here that I just kind of did a little bit of blending with, um, brought down the opacity quite a bit. Um, so yeah, like 51%, just kind of blend that in just a little bit. You can see what that does. Just adds like a subtle glow to so it kind of makes it a little bit more ethereal, which I quite like. Um, so that was that first adjustment here. And then I added in uh, kind of like this waterfall feature here that I kind of like had to paint in a little bit and make it kind of blend in with my scene. Um, brought in some flowers and stuff with it too. This was generated uh, actually with Mid Journey, this little waterfall feature. So I just brought that one element in there and kind of blended it in just because I really like how the water looked. Sometimes what I'll do is actually get a bunch of images from Unsplash. So if I go over to this collection over here, I've got like a bunch of, if I pull this in the frame, you can see I've got a bunch of like these waterfalls that I'll actually use and kind of paint together. Um, so for a lot of my renders, this is what I do. Um, I'll start with kind of like a rough base in Blender and then literally just paint these in um, and do like a lot of compositing with them. I'll use a whole bunch of different ones to kind of put it all together. For this one, I wanted to see how I could blend a mid-journey one in here too, just to see how that would work. And I really liked the result I got. It matched very well with my scene with the colors and stuff that I went with um, for all my vegetation and stuff. So that was that part there. And then we got a lot of adjustments here to kind of get to this. So what I was really struggling with here was um, kind of having a central focus point because everything was very vibrant and kind of bright and washed out a little bit. So my eye, when I'm looking at this, is not really naturally drawn into the frame. It's kind of like going all over the place trying to figure out where to look because there's brightness on the right side of the frame here. There's, you know, a lot of brightness on the left here. Um, you know, this is quite bright, obviously, and the background's kind of washed out. And I wanted my eye to kind of naturally move from the waterfall up through here to the castle. And I wasn't getting that effect. So I had to really go through and adjust a lot of stuff to kind of get to that point. So if I kind of turn these on layer by layer, I did a ton of adjusting to get to this. And so um, I encourage you to kind of take your time when you're working in Photoshop or your photo editor of choice to just really experiment, take your time to move through blending layers. And often a very subtle touch is all you need. I don't go too over the top of a lot of these filters. It's just like a tiny little, like, you know, a desaturation of negative five or for this photo filter, you know, just a little bit of a warming to it. So this is kind of what I do and just kind of layer by layer, just go through making very subtle things. Sometimes you can see here, I've got like a layer mask. I'll kind of paint this in, dodge and burn a little bit. You know, and as I kind of go, just add these in and get a little bit closer to a result that I want. And then I use kind of like a little selective coloring here to bring things out. And then I did a, a lot of photo filtering over in something called the Nick Collection, N-I-K. It's something from uh, Google that they made a while ago, I believe. Um, but they released this and I did like a lot of work to kind of adjust the colors and stuff in there to get to this and really brought out some blues and saturation from this waterfall. Then I kind of adjusted the uh, vignetting just a little bit here 
and then brought that up there. And I actually took this a step further and did some more editing. I wasn't happy with this, so I, I did a ton of work in, in Photoshop to kind of get this to a final composition. But this is the final result that you see right here. I had a lot of fun putting this together, and I hope you enjoyed kind of this breakdown of the process. I'm trying to do a little bit more of these uh, kind of walkthroughs here. And if you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're not already. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.